So what I would like to discuss with you is um, looking at the healthcare systems uh, from this perspective, what kind of challenges is dementia posing and how should we respond to it? The challenge of the healthcare system in the near future for the dementia, it should be about three things. One is the number of the population return to the dementia much more than we can, we can imagine for three reasons. One is we live longer. The second is uh, we aging faster. And the third one is we uh, survive so long. For example, in the past, when we have a heart attack, we pass away. Right now, we can save life. And then we push this population to another level, got cancer. And we get the treatment, radiation, chemotherapy. We push them to another. So we turn them to aging, and then we have a dementia. The second is, right now, we do not have any treatment for the dementia. It's a part of aging, it's a part of damage, and it's impossible to recover when it's gone. Even right now, the pharmaceutical industry invests a huge number of the money to produce the magic bullet to bring the dementia back to the normal. We cannot. In some kind of uh, damaged brain or aging brain, like a Parkinson, you have a shaking hand, we can introduce a new cell to the brain and make it recover. But it's about the model function. But for the memory, for the thinking process, we cannot do that. So this is a, the challenge. And the next step is the population will affect on this uh, dementia will be the low income population, which is the base of the pyramid, and will be affect around the world. They may be caused off they do not have any knowledge to eat well, live well, stay well, or may ex they may expose themselves to the pollution. We found so interesting uh, statistics show in China, this rapid growth of uh, dementia is fast, very fast when industrial is come to China, time from, from uh, agriculture to the industrial. And all the, everyone knows that in China, the pollute is everywhere. So this is several things from our inside as a genetic or our behavior, and also from the outside, from the pollute and other things that can affect to us. Right. So it's uh, certainly a very um, complex um, issue with lots of dimensions that we need to look at. So yes. um, from a health um, system perspective, in terms of the cost and the outcome, so how, do we, how are we going to manage this challenge? Mm. It is quite challenge if we look in another way. In the past, when we look at the, the health issue, we think about how much money that we plan to use for treatment or, or support them. But we have to think to another way around that we need to do a prevention rather than uh, wait for the time to get the treatment. A lot of research show that if you do the preventive program after 65 years old, useless. It's nothing happened. You have to do that before, like something like a 50 something and start to do that. And on this perspective, that preventive have to be personalized on you, have to be follow up and measure the effective of the prevention which is quite challenged because it needs multiple parameters to measure. For example, in the past when we do the scan of the brain, we cannot touch it like this. Right now we can have the MRI and bring it as a 3D to show to the patient. So they can see the how much volume that they have and how can they prolong this volume for last because the brain volume is reflect to the, the dementia. This is the one. 
Another thing is about the function and the cognitive. How can you train your brain to maintain the cognitive function? You may need to play Sudoku, but I'm not. Some of the research show that meditation will improve the brain function and brain volume. But what kind of meditation that fit for you and fit for me? So this is a new territory. Even a doctor itself, I am a doctor training as a doctor. I have no idea how to personalize myself. So right now, we need technology to monitor and measure the outcome and also fine tune very specifically in individual. But when you think about the mass of the population who may have a dementia, this is a challenge to us. Right, I see. So, um, as you mentioned, so we need to shift away from just treatment, looking more at prevention. And it probably means also that, you know, rather than thinking about old people in an aging society, we need to take more of a life course perspective and start looking at people at already a, a much younger age in order to start with, uh, with prevention. Is there anything you, you can share based on your work um, in, in, in your country? Uh, in, in my work, uh, we have uh, the challenge to our team as a neurologist team that found that when we have an Alzheimer case come to us, we cannot make any difference. And we ask ourselves that how can do the specific preventive program to our patient. So we do a lot of research on this and we work around on a single person. For example, we start with a sleep, we know that when you turn yourself to sleep, your brain will be open the way to clear the waste, 30% increase. So you need good sleep and how good it is. And this is a long-term time of sleep or just the quality of sleep. So this is a thing that we do sleep test and we tell the patient how can you improve your sleep quality. The second is about exercise. We found that exercise is reduced inflammatory in your body, but you have to do the right amount of exercise depend on your condition. The third is about food. A lot of food that damage the brain. One research showed that if you eat junk food, like a fries, burger, for four years, the hippocampo is the thing that controls your memory and cognition, shrink. So this is a the evidence that we found. That. So you have to turn to the good food, and this is specific for you, what kind of food that you need. The last thing is behavior modification. We found a lot of uh, research show that to improve the brain function, we need socialize. We need to see face to face. Because when you saw someone, your brain works so hard how I can interact with this guy this first time that we met, what is body language that I have to present to you, what is the question and what is the answer. So that is the thing that our brain work a lot. We cannot stay with the robot. We cannot stay with the smartphone. We need to see people. And that is a crucial thing that how can we make it happen in some country like uh, you have like a standalone family, you do not live with the people, you live quite far. So that's the thing that we have to teach or explain how important to the patient. For example, this morning everyone discussed about how can we extend uh, the retirement. It's not only good for the the economy that you generate economy, but in terms of medical way, it's good that when you go to work, you meet new people, you have a lot of participants, and you may practice yourself rather than you go to the same train, same time, same route. You have to do something different all the time. That is the way that you train your brain to make it sharp and smart. Okay. I have a a funny idea that uh, like uh, we talk about 21st century skill for the children, we grow up for the next uh, century. How about us? 
40 something, 50 something, shall we go to the primary school to learn for the new skill for the future? Because we do not know for the next 50 years what's going to happen, what kind of skill that we need. So this is a thing that I think we may need to rethink and try to implement it in the cheaper way as a preventive. Yeah, very interesting. Well, let's uh, take a moment to pick the brains of our audience uh, <laughs> and see if there's any questions or comments uh, on this very complex subject matter. Yes, please, over there. Uh, hello, my name is Patricia Conboy, and I work with HelpAge International. And thank you for your talk, which I've enjoyed. And I can see the value of uh, working to uh, identify dementia early and to take preventative action. I wonder from your experience, are there also negative consequences for people in terms of other systems in society? For example, life insurance or looking for loans for uh, other issues like uh, education of children or whatever that sometimes uh, doctor's reports are looked for by insurance companies and if one has a negative health record then it's a difficulty in terms of getting a loan. So on the one hand it's good for the individual to get an early diagnosis or to be helped in terms of prevention but on the other there can be consequences for the individual as well. Have you encountered that? Thank you. Uh, in, in that way I think for the from the perspective of the insurance and, uh, and the long term, they also need to, to think another way around also. Because the most of insurance, as uh, in the morning they mentioned about, they, they talk about the life uh, accident, and, uh, but they ne never think about that disability in the long term. And the brain is the one of that. Some of the tests that insurance do not allow to do, like a gene test, which is a predict that can be the dementia or Alzheimer in the future or not. But I think the incentive in another way should be think about how can we incentive the person who maintain the good health rather than waiting to get the money when you damage yourself. In, in my country, we found that uh, when we open the door for the people to access to the care as a national health security scheme. People care about their health. They keep smoking, they drink a lot, so and then they damage all the time. So it's a long-term consequence that may happen because they think that they have a fallback to take care if something wrong. But I believe that in the future, no one have a chance to access to this door because the population is bigger, because they live longer, but they get sick earlier, so it's double of the population. So no matter how you pay for the insurance or even the government plan to spend a lot of money on that, you never have a chance to get into the service. Do we have any other questions or comments from the audience? Yes, please, over there. Can we have a mic over there, please? I hate to uh, quote the New York Times at an econ economist conference, but I was just reading an article recently that said dementia rates in the U.S. have actually fallen unexpectedly over the last decade. Is it rising? Is it falling? Are we, um, I keep hearing it's out of control, and then you get these reports. Are we, are we in post-truth journalism, or is this actually true? I think it's, it's not falling. It's still running. Uh, as I have a data in my hand at age of uh, 85, 49% of Americans, they have Alzheimer. And 2.5 time, it's a woman. And sadly that you have to take care of your husband first, who get Alzheimer, and then you have Alzheimer later. So that is a statistic that I have now. And all around the world is keep rising. No place in the world is is right now. Any other questions or comments from the audience? Anyone else? 
Well, one more question that I have is, I mean, you know, uh, seems as we discussed already, it's a very complex um, uh, area, but how, how much do we actually know about the aging brain? And how do we, much do we know about how we can prevent, um, you know, uh, the aging of the brain and any damage that might happen? Where, where are we standing uh, with our knowledge right now about this? Uh, the right now is, I think everywhere in, in the world invests a lot of money to try to identify the early detection of Alzheimer, no matter with the blood test, imaging of the brain, and the way that we do the cognitive test. Everything is still in, in process. We do not have any clear cut or early detection yet because it's gradually damaged. But good news that a lot of uh, science evidence is show the positive of the preventive. For example, uh, last year the Mediterranean diet that's published show that they can improve the, the reduce the rate of stroke and also with the dementia. Some recommend in finger study in Finland, they recommend about uh, uh, two cups of uh, berry three times a week, social activity once a week, exercise, something that have uh, evidence proof that you can improve the, the cognitive function. And again, I think that this is still a challenge on medical science because we never reward the doctor who take care of the patient who never get sick. We always reward the doctor who can do a triple bypass. We can do that. Move that to this, move this to that. But we never reward the doctor who, OK, my thousand of the patient, healthy all the day, all the time, for the whole year, never get sick. So this is a challenge for the mindset, paradigm shift, and also technology to do the early detection also. All right, Konga, thank you very much. I think time is up. We will close uh, the session. Thank you very much for thank joining me much. here on stage. Thank you.